Hey all, Scott here. I want to try a new thing every day. So today, I'm gonna be self-conscious. Do I really have what it takes to be a video game fan? Just to make sure nobody has any doubts that I am. I went to the store, I bought this f***ing mug, okay? I like video games, alright? Four numbers spell out the year of the beast. 2016, when Nintendo had nothing better to do and said, let's make three of these. The NES Classic Edition was a miniaturized replica of the Nintendo Entertainment System with 30 built-in titles, a list I refer to as Ice Climber and 29 more games. I assume Nintendo no started production of this thing because like what else did they have releasing in 2016? Jesus. This was an easy way to bump up the old revenue. It appealed to Nintendo fans, collectors, people interested in trying out the classics, and people who grew up with these games who haven't really played much since. Looking at this graph of the population, the NES Classic Edition appealed to most people with skin. It was cute and functional. And because of this product, I'd argue that retro gaming entered a bit of a resurgence in major retailers. Ever since the NES Classic's release, retro gaming merchandise has been more prevalent than ever. This product showed that there was a big interest in retro games, and thus, wow. So this is the timeline where virginity won. Modern retro gaming merchandise is nothing new. If you've ever had a wedding catered by Hot Topic, you know they've always been into this kind of garbage. But nowadays, you can easily walk into a Walmart or Target and find all these little knickknacks based on games from yesteryear. And if Walmart or Target isn't your thing, then Cracker Barrel will do. Come on, I'm a gamer, I love Cracker Barrel. Retro gaming merchandise is everywhere now, so let's take a look at some examples of it all and see if they do the classics justice. Well, we wouldn't be here without the mini console craze. Now, these are kind of their own beast, easily worthy of a discussion by themselves. But let's quickly recap the big ones so far, the NES Classic Edition in 2016 and the SNES Classic Edition in 2017, easily at the top of the food chain. These little guys have fantastic build quality, include games that are pretty much the quintessential lineup for each console, really giving you a good idea as to what these systems could do. Tons of love poured into the packaging and menus. These are great love letters to fans of classic Nintendo. And then guess what happened in 2018? The Rapture. A ton of companies tried their hand at the mini console game, but sort of kind of failed miserably. The C64 Mini, a mini Commodore 64, but they didn't have the rights to call it the Commodore 64 Mini. We're off to a good start. It had this mini keyboard, cool right? It doesn't work and you have to use a digital on-screen keyboard, cool right? Sure, you can plug in a USB keyboard or whatever, but I will never exert that much energy for a product called this. The Neo Geo Mini, a very cheap, tiny arcade cabinet. You can plug this into the TV, but the games look sort of garbage, and for some reason they took the original Neo Geo button layout and changed it. What's the point of a mini console at that point? It's all about nostalgia and bringing you back to the past, yet you're going to switch the buttons around and design an arcade cabinet that doesn't even look like the most iconic looking Neo Geo arcade cabinet? It seems like every year SNK tries putting out a new Neo Geo nostalgia grabber, and I am under the opinion that Neo Geo is cool and has its place in video game history, but I'm tired of people acting like it's bigger than it really is. Before you get mad, remember, I'm the guy who owns Just Dance 2020 on the Wii. Do you really think my opinion matters? But the big mini console release of 2018 was was the PlayStation Classic, it was bad. This thing was just crazy rushed and was trying to capitalize on the modern retro gaming craze that the NES Classic started. One of the biggest problems in my opinion is that Nintendo's way better at harnessing the nostalgia for their products. A lot of people who own Nintendo consoles own them for the same reasons and played similar games. The Mario, Zeldas, Pokemons, all that. You put three PS1 owners in a room, it is very likely they all played completely different games. I'm not saying nostalgia doesn't exist for the PS1, but the console relied a lot more on third party games, so when we see the game lineup for the Classic and it's a whole lot of, uh huh? It's pretty obvious why. The lineup was bad, the emulation quality of the games was questionable, the price was $100. I got mine a few months ago for $20, and that was a beautiful price for this thing I never play. Now in 2019, we have the Sega Genesis Mini, which thankfully is toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nintendo's mini console quality. Over 40 games, and the titles they packed in are super cool. Some licensed Disney games, Konami games, this is an excellent little console. But here's my problem with the mini consoles. I never play them. I am not gonna warrant taking up an entire outlet or an HDMI port just for this little box that plays only 20 games, you know? I'd rather all these games be playable on the modern consoles, and hey, some of them are, but some of them aren't, and that's a little annoying. It's weird, when they're good, I like these things. Hell, even when they aren't great, I still like owning them as many replicas of the original systems. But as functional pieces of society, eh, I don't know, man. If you gave me the Sega Genesis Mini in its entirety as a downloadable app on the Switch for 60 bucks, yeah, I'd buy it and play it a lot more than the actual Genesis Mini. These things are a complete novelty, I love them, but I do not keep them plugged in. But these mini consoles inspired dozens of companies to jump into the retro gaming scene themselves, and ever since, Walmart has never been the same. I'd rather buy nicotine gum and go, oh great, fucking Galaga. I don't smoke, I just like the gum. Mini arcade cabinets are everywhere. Seriously, there's like six something companies making fully playable versions of arcade games you can. Jeez. Oh,
fit in your pocket. Let's start things off with Tiny Arcade. These are by far the cheapest of the bunch. I believe MSRP is around 20 bones or so, but I always see these at Walmart for around 13 bones a pop. The world's smallest arcade cabinets. Yeah, they got an ego over a tiny arcade and they're not afraid to show it. Each cabinet comes with a keychain. This is definitely just to reiterate how small these are. Like, wow, they're so tiny you can fit them on your keys. But seriously, who's gonna do that? Oh my god, I gotta drive to the hospital. Let me get my car key. Oh, oh, oh. I ended up ripping the keychains off of most of these. They really dig into your palms while playing them. But really, like, I'm just cool with throwing these on a desk and the keychain's a bit of an eyesore. Now, turning these things on, they're the real deal. They are playable. Just probably not the most ideal method of playing. So we got the Namco classics, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, and yeah, they are pretty faithful to the original games, but there's this large amount of choppiness to it all. Uh, we can see it the most with Galaga. Uh, just look at how the enemies come down. It's not nearly as smooth as the original. The simpler games work the best on these units. Uh, Pac-Man works surprisingly well, but that game, you only use the joystick. Stuff like Galaga, you have to mash the fire button and rock the joystick back and forth, and yeah, it's Galaga starring my thumbs. The simpler games, whether they're slower paced or require fewer control inputs, work the best in this form factor. But the thing is, you aren't buying these to be your one-stop shop for Dig Dug. You're buying these for the novelty of owning an incredibly small yet playable version of an arcade game. They have a lot of variants of these things out there, including cocktail cabinets, why? Well, let's say Tiny Arcade is a bit too tiny for you. You wanna beef things up. You want a miniature arcade cabinet that's not a laughing stock. Well, Keep looking. The My Arcade cabinets are a bit more pricey. These you generally find in the $20 to $30 range. So first off, I really do prefer the larger form factor here. This is like the perfect size for a desk toy, which is pretty much all I consider these things. Now popping in an embarrassing amount of batteries and turning this thing on, we're greeted to son of a bitch. For pretty much all the My Arcade releases I've come across, they ain't using the original arcade versions of these games. They're using the NES versions of these games. Yeah, I'm pissed. Now in most cases, the NES versions of these arcade games they're fine, they're doable, but they don't feel as good or as, as fun as the original arcade. It's the little things, the sound effects, music, graphics, even control in a few cases. They're just different enough to make these not nearly as good. But then we have a feature turned nightmare, the screw on, screw off joystick. Now my arcade must have been proud of this one. It's a big feature according to the box, like most consumers flip their shit when they see this. Whoa! But this is just a bad D-pad with a stick screwed on top. It doesn't give you the precision of a regular joystick and just using it as a D-pad, I mean, who wants to play Pac-Man with a D-pad? Gotta be honest, my thumb started to hurt after playing this. I I'm really not impressed. Now, I'm sure somebody must be saying, well, Scott, that's just Pac-Man. You should try Karate Champ. Who the fuck said that? Yeah, this is rough. I mean, my arcade's not totally at fault here. This is Karate Champ from the NES. It was already a bad game. And not much my arcade could do there, except give it lame controls and advertise this as if it's the arcade version of Karate Champ. Well, to round things out in terms of the budget mini arcades, here we have the Arcade Classics line. Uh, weirdly enough, whenever I see these, they're never with the video games like Tiny Arcade or My Arcade. They're in the toy section. And that's all I ever saw these as. Super cheap toys. These were the real deal, and these were in the goodie bags on the way out. I say that because I primarily associate these toys with this. Yup, a cheap monochrome LCD screen. I'm sure the sounds were there. Oh, come on, these came out within the past four years. These are comparable to the mini arcade cabinets made by Coleco in the 1980s. You can't tell me this was the best it could do. This is ridiculous. Well, they actually proved their worth later on. This Tetris one, while it's not a full color screen, it is lit up and is a fully playable game of Tetris. However, I will say the button labels can be kind of confusing, like put the labels underneath the buttons. But now they fully updated these things and have a pretty big lineup of games. Pac-Man, my God. It's actually Pac-Man. The joystick isn't anything to write home about, but it's serviceable. These things are big enough to play uncomfortably. Plus, they even have a Mortal Kombat one, ages 13 and up. See, when I accidentally only have my fake ID on me that says I'm two and need to buy a Mortal Kombat game, this one won't require me to show my ID. It's the perfect crime. These are legitimately pretty good and they're around the same price as the My Arcade Micro players. Now, where these falter a bit is the design. I don't know, I prefer the look and feel of the My Arcade ones. These do feel a bit cheaper. Like, My Arcade uses the original arcade cabinet design design, which is pretty cool, and this just looks like a fun night in Photoshop. But yeah, these ones surprise me, they ain't that bad. The My Arcade ones are sort of lame, and the Tiny Arcade ones bring in the most novelty fun hahas. But those are just the budget ones, what if you get bored and want to take out a loan?
Well, there are the full-blown replica arcade cabinets. These are like these, but are far more faithful to the original arcade cabinets, and sometimes more expensive. The Replicate Centipede cabinet is a solid 150, but it's not some screw-on D-pad looking thing, it's a legitimate recreation of Centipede with a working trackball. There are also these quarter-sized cabinets made by a different company, but they're just as, if not more, high quality. Like, legitimately, they are exact replicas of the original arcade cabinets, but a quarter the size. So these are obviously for the more hardcore fans or collectors. They are a tad bit bigger than the budget ones, which makes them that much more legitimately enjoyable to play on. But I'm a simple man and have a thing for Arcade 1-Up. They make cabinets that you can put together yourself around $300 and are big enough to feel like an actual arcade cabinet, though they are one fourth smaller. It has always been my dream to own my own arcade cabinet. Good dream, right? An Arcade 1-Up makes the perfect machines for at-home use, in my opinion. Now, I've already talked about my Galaga machine, but I recently bought one of their counter Ks, which are much smaller. And this is still pretty nice. The stick feels good. The screen's not the greatest. It's a bit washed out. But this is classic Pac-Man. It runs and looks great. It's $200. Okay, that's a bit much. I can somewhat understand the high price for the replica units, but this? For how Antha screen is and only containing Pac-Man and pac and Pal, which I can tell you right now, no being still alive has ever said, let's play pac and Pal. For $200, you can get a PS4, an Xbox One, a Switch Lite. You can't tell me this thing is worth $200. Everything feels fine, but not like overtly high quality. I'd say $100 to $150 would be good for this. Now there's a few of these other little handheld game devices for sale, and this one's really cool, the Oregon Trail. I live and die by this game, and while this isn't the easiest way to play, it's still really cool to have a little portable Oregon Trail machine. It looks like an old computer, and it's still the Oregon Trail. I like this one. But alongside all the other retro gaming merchandise, I almost always see other stuff made by the same companies that fall in the same general category, and these being more so very cheap game consoles. Like my arcade has this little handheld, Miss Pac-Man, great. And it's the NES version. Oh! Like, this wouldn't be that bad. It's a $20 handheld with three Namco arcade games on it. But who the hell said put a disc on it? This isn't fun to control any game with, let alone Miss Pac-Man. It really blows because the rest of this unit is honestly fairly solid. I saw this thing, the Go Retro Portable by Retrobit, and it's a Game Boy knockoff with a bunch of NES games on it alongside bonus games. These are literally just simple garbage games that are put on devices like this. This is where you go to play some burbles. This is very similar to a lot of those bootleg consoles you find online where it looks just like a Game Boy and comes with a bunch of stolen NES games alongside games like Burbles. But the weird thing about this one is that all the NES games are fully licensed. They're legally here. It's pretty cool they got a lot of Capcom stuff like Mega Man and Mighty Final Fight. There's Burger Time, a version of Tetris. This isn't the worst deal out there. It was only like 30 bucks, but the D-pad just isn't that great. Just going through the menus, it misread my inputs quite a bit. My arcade has a few of their own dedicated handhelds like this and... Oh sh**, they're bad. All of these devices are literally the Retrobit handheld if the Retrobit handheld didn't have the licensed good games, just the terrible bonus ones, like Burbles. It doesn't make any sense, my arcade has the licenses for a lot of arcade games, but they just used a bunch of Burbles wannabes! Well, the cheap retro toys aren't seeming to die anytime soon. Every year, it seems there's a new $20 plug-and-play system that's stupid, dumb, and stupid like the Legends Flashback by At Games. This is terrible. Like, they messed up the controls for Tetris on this thing. Is that even legal? But the little retro knickknacks are cool to see pop up in the stores. The Pac-Man Lite, that's pretty cool, but what does it look like when it's on? What the f***? You see a lot of mugs, like this one, it's a gold Zelda cartridge. This is exactly what I mean when I say, fun to look at, a bitch to drink. Little tchotchkes like playing cards and coasters, card games and board games, shirts to wear. Uh, sure, not all of this is of the highest quality. But, it's cool to see this hobby of mine that I once thought was too niche appear across some of the biggest stores out there. To see places like Walmart and Target give a piss about burger time, it's nice. Even though a lot of this stuff isn't for me, it's really cool to walk into these stores and see all these kind of products. And not only that, but see them do well. It's nice to see this thing I would have almost been embarrassed to call a hobby of mine a decade ago become so widely accepted and cherished. Now at this point you may go, Scott, that's great, you like gaming merchandise. Have you played any actual games recently? I bought a Roomba if that counts.